curious to know what it would be like. I set myself a challenge of shooting one roll of 35 millimeter film. So you might be asking yourself what I'm doing here and what this is and where my skate is and since a little while now I enjoy drinking coffee. I feel way more like an adult and I'm 18 now. No seriously, I just enjoy drinking it. It is pretty nice. In fact, that has nothing to do with today's video. Today we are going to do a little tutorial and this is going to be the part two of the last video. I said that I'm going to split it. So welcome back everyone first. I guess that's the first thing that you say on a YouTube video. I still have no idea what I'm doing here. In the last video I reviewed my first film photos and today I would like to show you how you can take your digital photos and turn them into film photos or just make them look like they were shot in 35 millimeter film and we're going to do that in Lightroom just in a second but first up I would now go outside and take a few photos and see if we get something the weather is not very good there's no more sun but I'm just going to take a little cruise with the e-bike in the forest and try to take some photos with the Sony here and then we're going to edit it. So I hope you will find this interesting. You're also going to get a little gift with this video. You can download a free preset, it's linked below, that I will later on create for film photos and you will see everything, so let's start. Coffee tastes pretty good. I still like hot chocolate a little bit more. But coffee has this nice effect. I always get so hyperactive when I drink it. Hyperactive. <laughs> Today is not really the best day for photography. The time of the year is just um, it gets dark early, there's no sun, there's no light and I don't know, I don't like it. Okay guys, I now packed up all my stuff in the backpack. Um, it's about to get dark, we maybe have half an hour to an hour left and to switch to something warmer because it's pretty cold outside. So just a few shots, I'm going to go outside, take a few photos, film a few things just just to give some impressions of what it looks like currently outside and then you will see the tutorial so let's go Okay, hey everyone, now we are in Adobe Lightroom. You might be already familiar with this if you're watching at this point. This is my favorite software, or the software that I use to edit my photos. Now here you see a collection of uh, five different photos. These four photos are the photos that I took today, but I don't know, I don't really like them. There is no subject. I just was outside alone taking photos of the forest and of this backpack. So I'm gonna start by editing this photo that I took last summer of my friend. And then I'm going to create a preset as a set. And then I will try that preset on these other photos and see where we can get with it. And you can also download the preset for free if you want. I put it on the website for free, so you're welcome. Let's start with this photo here. This is a pretty cool photo, I really like it. And I would like to get the film look here. So where do I start? I just start from the top and then go all the way down. I usually keep the white balance and the tint because that can all be done later. So with the exposure, maybe bring it a little bit up here because we have some dark parts here. And the contrast, maybe bring it or just leave it. I, I'm going to leave the contrast. A film look means that usually you have um, a very soft image and not much contrast. But you can do that by bringing down the highlights. So I'm going to bring my highlights to maybe minus 70. And then um, you can lift the shadows to make it even more soft. So now you almost have no contrast anymore. So I'm going to bring this to 60 maybe. That looks great. Then we have the whites. For this image I'm going to bring also the whites up a little bit. And I would like to get some blacks back here to get some darker points. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit maybe to 
minus 25. With these settings here, texture and clarity, I would not like to mess around for this film look. Um, I think a film look normally is pretty subtle, so I just don't think that you should do too much if you would like to get the film look. The Y brands, we are going to bring that up. The saturation, usually I drop it a little bit because later on I can always bring it back down there in the HSL sliders. So here we have the tone curve, which is very important. And I usually just do the S curve, which means two keyframes, one here and one here. And then I lift the highlights here. I drop the shadows or the blacks a little bit and that's going to give it some contrast back that we took up here and now we're able to fade our highlights and blacks which gives it the film look. I would say you see that in a lot of film photos or so film photos just look like that. So you're going to take the highlights here and bring them down a little bit and the shadows and bring them up a little bit and as you can see the more that you bring this up the more faded it gets i would not go too much with it but somewhere like this i think looks looks pretty cool then what a lot of people forget about what you should do is change here from rgb to the different channels so i think for film photos the red channel is important so let's have a look at that now you have all your red tones here on the curve and if i set the key point here on the curve then you can see if I drop this the shadows or the blacks get more blue and if I bring it up it gives it a reddish feeling and that's what I want because film photos often have that kind of look with red shadows and blacks so I'm going to bring it up a little bit somewhere like this I think it's easy to go too far here so I would say this looks pretty okay and then with the highlights um, I'm going to bring some of these blue tones back from the sky and also from the water so let's drop them a little bit. I think that is okay. I'm going to keep the other channels for now and moving on to the HSL slider which is where most of the magic happens so first up red I don't think that there's a lot of red tones other than the shoes here so let's see. There is just not a lot of red tones, we are going to leave it, but orange matters here, so let's see. I'm going to bring it slightly down just to fix the skin color a little bit. Then with the yellow, you can see if I bring it up, it goes more towards the green side, and if I bring it down, it goes more towards the orange side. I think for a film photo, the orange side looks better because it gives it this old vintage kind of orange feeling and that's what I want to achieve here and also same with the green slider you see if you bring this up a lot it gives us this poison look this very greenish look if you bring it down you get a little more orange into your photo and yellow tones and that's I guess what we want for film photos so let's bring it down a little bit so usually when I edit photos I bring down this slider the blue slider to get a teal look but I think for film photos it's better to bring it up to get some magenta and purple look so we're going to bring it up a little bit just like that we're going to leave magenta and purple moving on to saturation i think the yellow is a little too strong so let's bring down the yellow a little bit and we can bring up the orange just a little bit i keep everything here i only change the blue slide a little bit because that's the color of the water in the foreground as you can see if i bring it up it gets more bluish magenta and purple so let's bring this up a little bit to get these tones so somewhere like this i think if you edit a film photo yourself you shouldn't do too much but luminance is always important so we take our yellow slider so we take the yellow slider for this photo as we have a lot of yellow tones i would maybe bring it down to get a more uh, flat look you can see that now it looks more flat and now it looks more contrasty so let's bring it down a little bit and then let's change the blue slider and then the blue slider I will bring that up a little bit to expose the foreground here then let's come to the split toning something that is very necessary in my opinion here to get the film look is this slider here for the shadows so for the hue we are going to bring that into a orange to red place somewhere like this I think is great 14 15 somewhere like this so that we get this orange and red um, look that we already achieved before another time to make it a little stronger this look so if we bring this up you can see it gives it this um, reddish look but this is obviously too much so I would leave it somewhere like this at three or maybe four I will keep it here at three otherwise it gets too strong then for the highlights to balance this a little bit I would bring them to the um, bluish greenish side and bring them up just a little bit somewhere like two now i think our photo looks already pretty cool here we have sharpening which is way too high in my opinion at the moment i would bring that down to maybe 10. i don't think that you should bring up sharpening in a film photo i mean 
and film photos usually are not being sharp because they come out of the camera and I don't know you just don't bring that up in a film photo and then we have here noise reduction you also bring that down that is also not necessary here here lens correction and transform doesn't really matter here but here with effects you really achieve the film look and you give it this film look that you want so here it says grain and that is probably the most important slide of this tutorial what this is going to do as the name already said it's going to give it grain so what the more we bring this up the more grain you will see in the photo and usually film photos are grainy that's what they're known for at least i want to get quite a bit of film grain but don't get too much so i'm going to bring it to 45 45 yes and then here the size here you decide um, the size of the grain so if you bring this up it's going to be stronger and if you bring it down there's not going to be much um much grain anymore so i would maybe play around with this and i think somewhere like this is okay 35 then the roughness i'm going to keep it at 50. here you have the camera calibration i don't think that a lot of people use that i use it a lot though so if you bring this this is the legendary slider that's being used and being misused a lot of the times I think because if you bring that towards the left side towards this teal side you get this popular um, teal and orange look and you can easily make the mistake of overdoing it which a lot of people do as you see if you bring this a little bit it's going to be way too strong but I like to add just a little bit of that look to get these orange colors in the shadows and yeah this T look so we are going to just move it to minus 10 maybe to get a little bit of this I forgot one thing that we can still do here we have um, vignetting so that's also a cool thing to do I don't know if a lot of film photos actually have vignetting but let's try this um, if you bring this you can just bring a little bit of vignetting in there just to focus on your subject more and darken this surrounding here so I would say this was a pretty good color grade for what we did so if we look at the before and after by pressing this icon here as you can see we achieved the film look i think this mission is completed that was a pretty good color grade actually now what i'm going to do as i said is create a preset so if you don't know how to do that and you would like to learn it you're welcome here is a quick tutorial you go up here into the menu then it says develop and you say new preset and and then here you're going to choose everything that you would like to have on this preset. Transform, we didn't use that. Lens correction, we didn't use that, so we don't keep that. Um, let's turn off the gradient filters. And then here you can choose a group to put it into. I'm going to make a new group for this called H, called HE for Hannes Engel. And let's say film look. Now we're going to call this preset HE film one maybe maybe i'm going to create a few other in the future we will see i really like this film look then let's say create and we have it here as you see film look and here's our preset so let's go back to the library and let's try it out on this photo of the backpack here so in my opinion presets are great but they don't work right away all the time so you oftentimes you have to change a few sliders a little bit just to adjust but let's see here we have he film look and we apply it so here is our photo after using the preset to be honest i really like it and let's go down here i would maybe change one thing in this photo and that is the hue of the orange slider because it looks a little bit too red in my opinion here on the ladder so let's take this slider and if we bring it more towards this side you see how red it gets so let's bring it up more towards the other side I think that is already okay. One last step here that I noticed, maybe make it a little more greenish. So we're going to go to tint and bring it more towards, just a little bit more towards the green side. And that way it doesn't look so purple in the highlights. Here's the before and after. I mean, this is not a very cool photo to edit. There is um, not very good light and I don't know. But as you can see, it gives it this film look. And let's try it out in another photo. Okay, guys, to make this tutorial a little bit more interesting, I decided to go with another photo that I took in Berlin last year that maybe works better here because the forest photos of the day weren't really good anyway you can't always have a good day of photography so here we have a photo though that i think is great for this tutorial because it already has this film vibe so let's try out this preset here film one and as you can see right away it looks pretty cool it gives it this film look um, it makes it a little bit magenta because there is so much shadows here in the foreground i would maybe bring down this shadow red slider here because there's too much red maybe so 
somewhere like this i think it looks pretty cool but now we have a cool photo in my opinion that has this film look and that's how you make digital photos look like they were shot on film one last photo that i also took in berlin i think it's also pretty cool for a film photography tutorial we have this photo here of the train station of this of this train thing <laughs> and we apply the preset and right away i really like it i think it just has a cool vibe now and and it would be the perfect shot for my instagram this was my quick tutorial on how to get the film look in lightroom maybe i'm going to do a full-on advanced tutorial of this in the future where i talk about a few other things but for now that's it as i said you can download this preset here to get the same look for free it's the first link in the description below moving on to the end of the video Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you find it interesting and I hope you can edit your own film photos now. As I said before, if you want to download this preset that we created today, it's linked below. See you in the next one, peace out, bye.